technology, such as the U-boats. U-boats are underwater submarines that attack the Allied positions without any warnings. Zeppelins. Zeppelins are basically large gas-filled balloons which are used along with planes to have recently bombed the eastern coast. Tanks. Tanks are a new automobile that have been used to go over no man's land, which are another great way of protection. Lastly, we have the poison gas. Poison gas is used to suffocate or choke the allied enemy. Um, they can do as much as burn and leave many blisters. Now to our military instructor who will show us weapons that we use in the field. With the advancements in great war technology, we've been able to design this, the 1903 Springfield Rifle. This is the standard issue weapon for the U.S. troops going overseas. This weapon is superior to most others because it is fed by, by shell cartridges and can feed up to five rounds before it needs reloading. This is a musket. We used these during the Civil War to defend our country. What you had to do to load these was you had to individually pour in the powder, tamp it down, put in the single shot, and tamp that down as well. Then put on a firing cap, pull back the hammer, and then you were ready to fire. You got one shot. This could take up to 30 seconds to complete and was very difficult. Recent modicle. <laughs> Alright. This is the BAR, or Browning Automatic Rifle. It's equipped with a 20 round box magazine that uses the same rifle cartridge as the 1903 Springfield. This makes it universal. It's also equipped with a bipod for when advancing on any pos enemy positions. One of these weapons is given to each squad to provide supporting fire and keep down enemies in their trenches. This here is the latest and greatest in military technology. This is the Browning 1917 water-cooled machine gun. It uses the same 30-odd six rounds as all other weapons employed by the U.S. military and is belt-fed so it can keep a sustained rate of fire of 450 rounds per minute. This sleeve on the front is filled with water to prevent the barrel from overheating and helps it sustain long periods of fire. This is the water-cooled 30 caliber machine gun. It's transportable by a crew of five men and comes with a tripod for sustained fire capabilities. Nothing keeps the enemy in their trenches like a Browning water-cooled machine gun. Here are some of the advances in Great War communications. First, we have the telegraph. This can send long-range messages over great distances by tapping this pedal. The downside to this is you have to run the spool of wire wherever you want to have one of these located. For longer-range communications where a wire cannot be run, we use homing pigeons. These birds are able to fly with messages strapped to their leg. Every box comes with two pigeons, a message bottle, and a book of codes to encrypt. Thirty-eight years ago, Clara Barton funded our organization, the Red Cross. Ever since then, we have been dedicated to meet the needs of the soldiers. Although it's hard to adapt to their changes, we still try our best to stay true to our roots. Soldiers live out on the open. They share food with rats and uh, a bed with mice. But soldiers have little to no space for each other. They live around the dead bodies and uh, use the dead bodies as shield from attacker. They have no place to use bathroom and survival through raining storms. Mm -hmm. They had dogs trained to live over barbed wire. They couldn't leave trencher or they would be in danger. No much sleep was given and they have to sleep during day and one hour at night. You may have to wake up to do daily chores or fight. Now to the reporters in the field. Over the last few years of war, soldiers like this have dug trenches in the Western Front with shovels and picks. Soldiers need to keep their heads down to avoid being shot in the trenches. They use the trench periscope to see the enemy without being exposed. When they see the coast is clear to storm the enemy trenches, they use wire cutters to cut through the barbed wire, blocking their paths. 
With trench warfare, weapons have evolved as well. Poison gas is now used to kill enemies in the safety of their trenches. When a gas alarm rings, the soldiers put on their gas masks and prepare for battle. The poisonous gas would cause soldiers to have boils, bleed internally, go blind, and burn their lungs. While gas masks protected many, others would still be affected by the harmful gases. Chlorine and mustard gases were the two most commonly used. Digging in shallow areas for the trenches has led to sections flooding. This can become unsanitary for soldiers to combat this. Soldiers would use duck boards or planks at the bottom of the trenches to prevent from stepping in mud or water. It did little to raise the troops morale. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. We are here today to present the latest and greatest in German engineering. These shells can be launched over 10 miles by cannon to bombard the Allied forces. They have high explosive and are very dangerous. Browning weapons are helping us to win the war, like the BAR and the water-cooled machine gun. Help support the troops, buy bonds, and support Browning. Inflation has increased among many countries around the world because of the war. This has led to many uprisings and revolts. Due to the U.S. joining the war late, less men have been lost because of it. As men were drafted into the war, women had to take over their jobs while they were away.